Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. And today we're gonna take a look at two very, very different pairs of shoes that look remarkably the same. And uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and introduce them. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about what's similar between them. And then uh, in the end, we're gonna talk a little bit about what's different. Now, this is a little different from the traditional shoe battle format that I had established a little while ago, because I felt that nobody really cared about some of the detailed metrics that I did, you know, measuring stitch density, things like that. So I'll show you um, some of the things as we look at the shoes today, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Instead, we're gonna talk a little bit about how things feel, how they wear, and really kind of the, the intrinsic pieces of owning the shoes so that you can get a better understanding. <clears throat> so let's start out. Today we have a uh, willow grain pair of split toes. This is the Crockett and Jones Ball Four, and this is part of the hand grade line at Crockett and Jones. You can see had a uh, nice, good, hard day of wear. Okay, and then we're gonna compare this to a shoe that's much less expensive, which is a Meerman. Um, this is their one o six five nine six which is very similar, also in willow grain. I had these custom made with a leather sole so that they're similar. Now, um, as you look at them, they're both leather grain, they're both split toes, they both have the reverse, they both have the fancy stitching on the top uh, with two different pieces, and they're both five eyelet derbies. And as you can tell, they're very similar in color. So, uh, as we look at the back here, um, the heel counter is cut so that there's no seam. That's uh, the Meerman. Then, of course, the heel counters um, have the full seam on the Crockett and Jones. Now, on the Crockett and Jones, this is uh, skived leather. Um, but it's, it is relatively thick, so this would be what I would pass as the dime test here, okay? Which, uh, if you've watched my shoe battles before, you know. And here, it's a little bit thicker, probably not skived, um, but probably like the quarter. So the thickness of the dime versus the thickness of the quarter in terms of, of that piece. Now, I want to point out something, though. Most of shoemaking, as you really get into it, and what makes the brands different, and what makes the value different, and speaking of value, uh, this shoe is um, normally um, $200, and then um, there's an additional fee of $40 for the upgraded sole, uh, and um, these run about $1,050. So a very big difference in the price on these, which is part of the reason why I wanted to do a um, comparison. Now, a big part of the shoe is the pattern, okay? And so if you just take the, the way the shoe looks away and you look at, this is the piece that's cut, okay? Now this is cut in one piece versus the two pieces there. But let's look at proportions, right? If you look at the heel and you look at this, the proportion is very different than this one. You can see the heel is much longer. Now, the heel is much longer on the Crockett and Jones and that has a little bit of a change in the way the elegance looks while you're walking. Um, and that is part of the design. It's also part of the balance of the shoe when you look at it as a whole, right? You can see the, th the toe is a bit thinner, okay? So you got a little bit sleeker look to it here as well. So, um, Again, just a little bit there. And then of course they are the same size, but the Crockett and Jones, um, because of that elongated toe, is a little bit um, uh, longer as well. So if we look at the two shoes side by side, you can see just a little bit longer, not very much. Okay. Now let's take a look at the aprons. The apron on the Meerman is your traditional boar hair stitch where on the Crockett and Jones, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, may even be machine stitch, although it may also be hand stitch. Now it does have 
the stitching underneath the rise there, um, which is similar, but not quite the same as it is here. Now, Meerman, which is a Spanish company, is made in China. And of course, Crockett & Jones is an English company, and these are made in England. So a very big difference in the access to high quality leather and a very big difference in the cost of labor um, and really the skill of the laborers uh, as well. Although Meerman, uh, four shoes uh, produced in China in a factory environment, China, China has some very, very good bespoke um, makers and ateliers. But from a factory perspective, um, you know, Meerman went in, trained uh, this team of workers um, uh, there and, and has done a really good job uh, creating this uh, heavy skill craft um, in the region. Um, and this is in Shanghai. And um, so not a, uh, not a bad set of skills. Um, if you look at the finishing here, they've done some very um, nice fudging. I'm gonna try to get the light a little bit closer so you can see it. So fudging, and you can see the stitch density on the shoes is actually very good. Now we're gonna compare that to the Crockett and Jones. Okay, now there's the, this is the thick fudging and it has the, the higher stitch density, but not by very much because Meerman is actually really good. Now, um, so let's start talking about the brass tacks, right? When, when you think about the high-end shoes, there's a couple things that you're paying more for, okay? You pay more for leather linings that are good. You pay more for the, um, the actual upper and the quality of the upper. Um, so just because they're both willow grain doesn't mean that they're the same. If you look here, you can see that this willow grain has some very, very heavy creasing in it. Where if you look here, that creasing is much, much reduced. So these shoes will look better longer, right? Now this has had no, I haven't put any conditioner on it. I haven't done anything like that. So this is really how they look, but I did wear them a whole day. So this is a, um, you know, a good comparison. Uh, I have worn this, these three or four days. So it is, uh, it does have a little bit more wear, but uh, also not a ton, right? Now, the finishing on the outside, the sole, um, is, uh, is rougher, okay? And a lot rougher. Um, you could actually sand this down and, uh, and feel a lot better um, run, running your hand over it. It's, it's pretty rough. Now, it's not supposed to be, this is all done by machine. And it, uh, it's just, I would say like on a quality scale of uh, like a C to like five A's, this is kind of like a B level work, right? So it could be a lot, a lot nicer. Now, when we look at this, you know, this is, you know, it, you've got a little bit of machine work in it, but really, um, as I put my hand across it, it feels much nicer and, um, you know, just a much cleaner construction. Now, this is also a double sole compared to a single sole. So that's another piece that's part of it. And the double sole will wear longer, but it also looks like a chunkier shoe. So they'll probably have the same profile because the Meerman is a little bit higher. Um, this, the sole is thicker, but the shoe is narrower. So uh, an interesting piece there. Now, um, it's always fascinating to me as you look at you know, how things are finished you know, how clean the welt line is, because it's a 270, all right? Pretty pretty darn clean. And we look at this one. Oh, look at that. Pretty darn clean, all right? So it's a, it's a conundrum. Now the lining leather, now I upgraded these to the Depoy lining as part of their um, hand grade line. And so the lining on these are very nice. But the lining on this is exceptional. And when I say exceptional, take a look at this. And we're gonna, again, we'll put this in here, bring it in, you can see. It has the normal Crockett and Jones lining up toward the upper in the top of the vamp here. But in the back, 
This is hand grid lining, and this feels almost as nice as the upper of the shoe. It's very, very soft. Now, Crockett & Jones, if you've watched my, my channel before, you know that I'm a fan of their linings in general, and this is a clear step above. Now, you know, might need to take a match to that. Burn it down a little bit, but not a big deal. There's a little loose um, uh, thread there as well. Again, not a big deal. The, um, the upper leather on this is hand painted. So this is something that Crockett and Jones does with their um, hand grade line is they do them in a crust leather and then they dye each pair by hand. Now, this doesn't have any streaks. It's really, really well done so that it's uniform. And I prefer <laughs> that it's a little, little less uniform, honestly. And if you look at like a pair of Edward Green, which I'll do a comparison video on these compared to a pair of Edward Green Dovers. Um, they uh, have a little bit more um, color variety along the shoe uh, as well, which is uh, part of what makes Edward Green Edward Green. So, but these are very, very nicely done. And again, very clean, a little bit more balanced, although they do have the this traditional split heel as all Crockett and Jones do, if you ever pay attention to that. Now these are hand grade um, trees that I happen to have, so I didn't buy them with the shoes, and the trees for both shoes are not included in the prices that I gave you before. So that's what's similar. Um, when we go into the differences, it's really about proportion. We talked about the proportion of the heel. Now let's look at the proportion of the facing, okay? Now you look at the proportion of the facing, it's much shorter on the Mearman. You can also see that there's a little bit more gap on the Mearman, although when I wear them, and if you look at my Instagram, you can see pictures of me wearing them, uh, there is still a, a healthy gap um, on them on the hoof. So that's also really, really well done. So um, now if you look here, um, is this side a little bit higher than this side? As I wear them, you know, certainly you can see it on the tree. Um, it's got a little bit of a of a um, a, an angle that they do when they last it. Um, but the Mearman does too. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit more pronounced than it is on the other one. So um, that's not anything, you know, it's neither here nor there. It's relatively equivalent. So really the difference is the patterns, the, um, now I like the, the, the actual toe, uh, apron here better, but if we look at the split toes, which if you're into this style, you know, makes a big difference. This is, you know, skin stitched on the Crockett and Jones and is a very tight reverse stitch on the Mearman. So not the very, very difficult technical maneuver there. So it's an interesting conundrum, right? Is this shoe worth five times as much as this shoe? And I'm gonna have to say no. I really don't think it is. Now, um, that's the American pricing. If you go and you buy them in Europe, which I should have done but didn't, uh, you can get them uh, for a much better deal. Uh, but it's even so, it's still 4X instead of 5X. And at the end of the day, um, based on the quality of these um, versus these, it's uh, it's it's a little bit uh, it's a it's a little bit difficult to justify the increase in price. Now, as I wear Crockett and Jones long term, they are much more comfortable than Meerman. Even the the the, the hand grade line with Meerman, the Linea Maestro, um, they're just better wearing long term shoes. And that's really, I think, what you're paying for is, is how they last that way and how they feel long term. And of course, on the leather quality here, you know, these are not going to show deep creases. They do show creases, but not as deep as they are in these. And that is something uh, there as well. Although it's very difficult to do that comparison because it's willow grain and willow grain. And at the end of the day, and this is Wisconsin Shoe Guys assumption, so let's be clear about that. I believe that if they had taken this piece of leather and they had moved it this way, it would crease the same as this 
And it's just because the clicker, the people at Crockett and Jones who, who cut the leather, make sure that it's positioned right for the bend on the shoe, that you get a better creasing pattern on it than you do over here. There's also a potential difference in the thickness of the leather and they may do some treatments on it as well. But that is my assumption. Now I hate to assume, but based on the years of, of reading and listening and watching folks in this industry, that is consistent with some of the things that I've heard in the past. So what do you think? Would you spend 5X uh, for the shoes that are made in England um, when they are this similar? Or do you think that the Meerman is good enough at the price point and that's what you would do. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. I've shared my thoughts. Please share your thoughts in the comments below and let's get a lively discussion going. Thanks again.